Hey guys, it's your Kingdom Come, and we're back here with another podcast, another episode. Today, we will be reacting to a video that Andy Stanley, one of Andy Stanley's uh, sermons, and uh, recently he put out something that was a little, would you say a little or a lot? Uh, pretty concerning. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, basically he uh, he got up on the stage and he, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll give it to you straight from the beginning so you can watch it kind of through the right lens. Um he basically denied the inerrancy of Scripture. And the inerrancy of Scripture, basically, that means uh, the fact that Scripture is not ever wrong. And uh, also the authority of mm. Scripture is another thing that he uh, pretty clearly denies in this video. So uh, just a heads up to look uh, for those things. Um, and uh, We'll be yeah. addressing these issues yes. in this podcast. Yeah, we, we need to... Uh, and I, I, obviously, we, we do have to throw in a caveat here that, um, you know, we did we did say at the beginning when we started this podcast that we were going to do three things. We were going to teach from the word, which I would say we definitely have done. We've done a lot of that mm. and we'll continue to do that. And we're going to do that today as well as we react to this video. Um, also, we had said that we were going to interview people, which we need to get our act together with that. Yeah. Um, we, uh, we, we also, we, we did interview one person, um, and maybe he'll come back. Um, yeah, if you're watching, please come back. <laughs> um, we desperately need you. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, yeah. And then we also said that we would offer commentary, uh, through a biblical lens on things that are currently happening in the world and in the church. Um, and this definitely qualifies. Andy Stanley is a very well-known uh, pastor. He's the pastor of North Point. Um, uh, his father also, you know, obviously very well-known. Mm. And yeah. so this is this is a big issue. So uh, yeah. yeah, let's All right, let's, let's get into it. it. Yeah. Ready? Yep. yep. A new starting point. In fact, adults often need a brand new starting point for faith. So what we're going to do in this series, what we're going to do for the next few weeks, is we're going to hit the restart button. We're going to hit the restart button and ask the question, what if we didn't know anything, where would we start? What if we... Well, I'll give you one answer. You start with the Bible. <laughs> that's the starting part. Yeah. Right? That's, gonna, that's, that's the rock you're going to build on, yeah. right? Yeah. That's, that's, that's how you do it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway, we'll address we'll, that we'll, more we'll, later. Yeah, we, got we'll, a, we got a big, uh, big bang at the end. <laughs> so never heard any of those stories, where would we start? What if we never read the Bible, where would we start? What if we never gone to church, where would we start? Where would we start if we were starting all over as adults as it relates to faith and specifically as it relates to the Christian faith? So we're going to hit the restart button and we're going to all start over all together. And we're going to learn some new things and we're going to hear some challenging things. You're going to hear some things that you've heard before, but my hope is that for many of you where there's been a gap where you want to believe, you want to be able to reconcile the real world, your adult world with your faith, that you'll find that they are easily reconcilable. But we're going to... You shouldn't have to bend the word of God in order to get it to reconcile with the world you see around you. Mm. Yeah. Because the word of God tells us a lot about the world around us that we mm. wouldn't have known otherwise. Yeah. Right? Like, for example... Um, as believers, we know that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, for example, right? That's, that's just an example. Uh, but a lot of people probably realize that there's, who are not Christians, you know, a lot of people who are not Christians mm. probably realize that there's something wrong with the world, mm. right? Yeah. Like I've heard a lot of people where their testimony is like, yeah, I realized that there was something wrong with the world, but I couldn't put my finger on it, mm. you know? Yeah. But the Bible gives us a category for that. The Bible tells us specifically, uh, you 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 see that something is wrong with the world. You're right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is wrong with the world. <laughs> yeah. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Mm. And that's just an example. You see, you don't have to get the the the. You don't have to bend the scriptures, which is something that so many have done in, mm. in you know in this yeah. day and age. Yeah. You don't have to bend the scriptures to get them to reconcile with. 
uh, with the world you're seeing around you. Mm. And you don't even have to soften the scriptures to get them to reconcile, which is what you're going to see Andy Stanley do here. Yeah. You know, he's softening the scriptures. Mm. I can't, honestly, I can't give any, you know, I mean, I guess he is bending the scriptures by saying that all, that that they're not the word of God, yeah. right? Because yeah, the yeah. word of God says all scriptures God breathes. So yes, yeah. he, he is in a sense bending the scriptures, but he's also softening them, mm. right? So you don't need to bend the scriptures to get them to... Uh, agree with the world you see around you. Yeah. You don't need to soften the scriptures to get them to agree with the world you mm. see around you. Yeah. You know, um, rather the scriptures give us a lens through which to view the world, and it helps us to be more informed as we go about our lives as believers. Mm. Amen to that. Yeah. So. Yeah. We do not have to bend the word of God. Yeah. Especially to the lost world. You know. And and we're actually commanded not to. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's a whole nother thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's get into it have to approach this a little bit differently than perhaps you approached it as a child because starting off with faith as a child is very different than starting off with faith as an adult now here's part of the problem part of the problem in Christianity is that when we grew up we were taught the Bible and that in and of itself is not a problem but in some ways the way we were taught the Bible is problematic because if you grew up in a home like I did or a culture like I did or a Christian tradition like I did I heard that this was the Word of God and I've always believed that I've heard that it was infallible. I believe that, I've too. Believe that. <laughs> I heard that it was inerrant. There were no mistakes, and I believe that. I heard that I it was that all too. inspired from Genesis to maps. That's the way the pastor used to say it. Man, my, what a pastor that used to come to our I church. Never from Genesis that. to maps, yeah, from the, no, table I, I and then, the, you know, the, ta- uh, the con- table of oh. contents all the way to maps, that the whole thing is inspired. And as a child, you say, yes, sir, and yes, ma'am, and, you know, Adam and Eve and Jesus and Noah and Moses and Jesus coming back. It's all equal. It's all in equal terms. But unfortunately, because the Bible was presented to us as a book, which it is not, because it was all presented as, as one holistic thing, which it is not, because we never even understood what Mm. You want to go first, or do you want me to? Hey, I'll take it, man. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. So, so he says that the Bible is not one holistic book. What? Yeah. <laughs> From Genesis to Revelation, there, there is, there is such unity. Yeah. Between from Genesis to Revelation, I mean, even even how long ago? I don't know, remember how long ago it was, but he he was unhitching that we need to unhinge. Well, I forget how he said it. Unhitch from the old. Testament. Unhitch from the yeah. from the Old Testament. Yeah, that's yeah. what that's what he said. Yeah. But it's it's not the case. The scriptures are totally linked with one another. They yeah. they it's one story. Yeah. It's one story of redemption, right? You see, in 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 the garden, you see man falls, and then you see throughout the Old Testament God, uh, working. Um, redemption for his people. Well, the 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 process of redemption is coming in detail, like the verse in Genesis three fifteen, mm. where it says that um, he shall bruise uh, your head and you shall bruise his heel. Mm-hmm. That's the promise, and that promise is is laid out in fuller detail. It's 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 growing more in detail as the yeah. Old Testament goes on, and then in the New Testament, it's finally fulfilled in Christ. And then in Revelation, we have this king who is Christ coming back mm-hmm. to rescue his people, to bring salvation. So yeah, it's it's yeah. one unified story. Yeah. Don't get that wrong, yeah. you know? Yeah, the Bible reads, yeah, the Bible reads from cover to cover. And you know what? If he was trying to make some kind of, you know, like, astute scholarly point that, like, the Bible was written by different people at different times and stuff like that, then he should have said that explicitly. Yeah. Because, yeah. Was the Bible written by different people at different times? You know, yes, but it was all inspired by God. First of all, mm, yeah. God breathed, as mm. the Word of God says. Yeah. Um, and it fits together. Like I think even some people, some people don't realize how well the Word of God fits together mm. as a unit, as a holistic mm. unit. Yeah. And I mean, I don't. I don't claim to realize that to it to its extent either. How mm. could anybody? But but yeah. we need to realize at least that truth that the Bible fits together as a holistic unit, and then yeah. and then we need to you know go and see how that is so. Yeah, like there's no parts of Scripture that are contradicting cont- contradicting right. one another. Right, right. You know, like there's no part in in the book of. Uh, Let's say Leviticus that's contradicting Galatians. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. You know, like it's the whole Bible's. Yeah. So. And while while we have this pause, there's another thing that's really bothering me about this, uh, you know, this whole this whole video so far, is that um, he's really kind of bagging on childlike faith. Mm. You know, like yeah. he's really putting down childlike faith, and um, I understand that as a person grows older, they need to be more informed in their faith. 
Mm -hmm. Like maybe obviously you're not going to have like certain questions that you had when you were younger. Yeah. When you're older. Right. I mean, like, like for example, um, you know, the sacrificial system, you're not going to have an idea of how that works when you're a child, of course. Right. But then when you get older, you're going to learn how the sacrificial system works. Mm -hmm. Right. But what he's doing here is he's bagging on 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 the mindset that a person is to have when they're approaching the scriptures mm. right the mindset that we have when they're appro- when we're approaching the scriptures has to be the same when we're a child and when we're an adult when we're a child we read the scriptures right mm. and we might not understand them but what do we say i believe it yeah. you know and 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 when we're older right when we do start to understand the scriptures, mm. we still have the same response. We still say, yes, I believe it. So we look at something like the sacrificial system, right? Mm. We say, yes, I believe that that happened, right? Yeah. And we, we, we have to have that same childlike faith. And I'm just reminded of, um, of a verse in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. Um, actually, I'm going to start uh, at... That verse one. So, yeah. (laughs) At that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, truly, I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So what it seems to me like he is advocating for in this video is turn away from being children. Mm. But what does Christ say? You need to turn and become like children. You need to yeah. humble yourself and accept what and 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 first of all, you know, accept it with humility because mm-hmm. that's one thing that, you know, that, you know, children children are relying on mm-hmm. uh, you know, on their parents and stuff like that most of the time, yeah. right? But they they're accepting the truth, right? Mm-hmm. They just they believe it. Mm-hmm. They just believe it. Yeah. And yeah. then and they also uh, they also are putting their trust in their parents. Yeah, like they're not they're not at night uh being like, "So, uh, do you have enough money to pay, yeah. <laughs> pay for dinner tonight?" Exactly. You know, they're just reliant upon mm-hmm. their parents. And that's and that's what we have to that's the type of faith that we have to have with with God. Mm. And what it yeah. seems to me is that he's like he's saying, "Yeah, you used to have that faith, but now you got to have some other faith." Yeah, some other strategy. Some, some other kind of faith. Or, so yeah. yeah, yeah, some other strategy. That's a good word. Like yeah. a, some other kind of building strategy. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. we don't yeah. need more strategies in the church. We need the word of God. <laughs> Amen to that. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So yeah. All right, let's keep going. Where this came from, it was a house of cards. So all someone had to do was come along and pull away a couple of the pieces, a couple of the foundational pieces, and suddenly the whole thing comes tumbling down. And so we went off to college. And we discovered that even though it was sacred, it wasn't scientific. And even though, you know, it was something to appreciate, it wasn't necessarily something that was factual. And even though there were stories in here that were inspirational, they weren't necessarily true. And then we experienced life, and there began to be more and more distance and more and more daylight between what we experienced and what we grew up believing. Um... So a couple of things here. First of all, the the Bible is both sacred and scientific. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and and what what the world looks at as science right now, um, some of it's true. Some of it is a perversion of the truth. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. When people say it's the science, mm. uh, for example, uh, the that um, the life does not begin at conception or something like that. When people mm. say that, that it's the science that that's the case, yeah. that's a perversion of the truth. The mm. truth is life begins at conception. Yeah. And anyone who's actually committed to the science will back that up. Yeah. Oh, there yeah. are, there are the, there are scientists that, you know, that will back that up because they're committed to the truth. But anyway, that's, that's a side yeah. note. The other thing that I noticed there was that basically he's saying that, that as you experience life as a Christian, all right, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this is what I mm. seem to think that he's saying, is as you experience life as a Christian, um, there seems there there grows a gap between your experience and what the Word of God teaches, right? Yeah. Is that what he's yeah. saying? That's and, what it seems like. Yeah. I mean, he's very like, I don't know, when he describes stuff, it's almost like yeah, it's almost like reading a philosopher. Yeah, well, or, yeah, well, that's know, that's what you have to do. You have to appeal to some wisdom of the world in order to get around the Word of God. Yeah, it's like like every it's not clear or plain whenever like when i when i was watching this before you i'm like what is he trying to say yeah yeah 
I mean, there was the, like towards the end, you're like, oh, that's really bad. Yeah. But like in the middle, you're like, what is he trying to say? But yeah, no, I. Yeah. But it does seem like he he's saying that. Well, the know? thing that's concerning to me is that's the exact opposite of my experience as a Christian. Mm, yeah. Like my experience as a Christian has been that the further I go in my walk with God, the more that I see scripture actually starting to become real and play out in my life. Yeah. Whether it be like fruits of the spirit and sanctification and things like that. Yeah. Or like, um, you know, you start to, when, when you read the word of God and, and God says that like, you know, if people behave this way, then this stuff's probably going to happen. And then you look around in the world and you see people behaving this way and, Oh look, that stuff's happening. You know, <laughs> yeah, just yeah. things like that too. Yeah. Um, you know, so as, as I grow in my walk and Hey, maybe this is just my personal experience, but I really don't think it's just my personal experience. No, no, no. As yeah. you go along in your life, it actually comes closer. You know, those two things come closer. Reality, mm. your experience and the word of God end up getting closer together. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what, so that's what's supposed to take place. Like when you, when you grow in your faith, you're not supposed to, um, drift away to say that, oh, the Bible's no longer, uh, 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 it's no longer God's word. It's just a book. You know, that, that's not what's supposed to happen yeah. when you're growing in your faith. When you're growing in your faith, you're supposed to grow in love with God's word. Yeah. You're supposed yeah, to like grow David, div- right? Yeah. David, yeah. David loved the law of God. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. I mean, it's just, I, like, when I'm like, man, the Christian life, yes, it's a, it's a paradox. You go up and down, up, but if you zoom out and you see it's a trajectory, trajectory like this it's going up Mm -hmm. that's going to continue to grow and grow and grow and grow you know not not down 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 yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah but even if you grew up in a home where this book the bible was so revered perhaps you never saw anybody read it a book that you never placed anything on on the coffee table but you never learned to read it yourself and you went to a church where somebody opened it up week after week and you knew that what they were saying was important but you didn't really understand it And then you went into an environment that didn't respect it. And suddenly, along with your childhood faith, that starting point that seemed so relevant way back then, suddenly it all went away. See, here's what I think. (laughs) I know what you're going to say. Here's what I think. No. What does the Bible say? (laughs) You know, like if I ever, like I heard heard Paul Walsh say, he was like, if I ever went to a church with my family and I heard the preacher say, uh, I have something in my heart to tell you, or this is what I think he said. I walk right out of that church, <laughs> you know, because yeah. it's, it's like, no, we don't care what you think. We care what God has to yeah, say. If, if you get, if you have Bible believing Christians sitting in the pews, they are not going to want you. They're not going to want to hear you start an argument by here's what I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's going to turn them right off. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And here's where we're going. Well, here's what Andy Stanley thinks. Let's go. For the next few weeks. And here's where I'm going to challenge you a bit. And here's where there may be some misunderstanding. And here's where you may be tempted to send me an email. So just hang on. Mm. I did hang on. (laughs) The Bible says, in quotes, the Bible says is not an adequate starting point or returning point for many adults. For many adults, it's not enough for me to say to you, okay, now I'm going to restart your faith. Now the Bible says, you're going to go, okay, I already did that. I already did the Bible says. I grew up with the Bible says, and I know what the Bible says. But let me tell you about my job. Let me tell you about my divorce. Let me tell you about my children. Let me tell you about my unanswered prayer. Andy, if if we're going to try to restart my faith by starting with the Bible says, the Bible teaches, not interested. So what I've come to believe and what we've come to believe and the reason we're doing this series is that the Bible says for many adults is not an adequate place to start. To, to start. To That's start. Yeah, he ends with, to start. Yeah. So, so he basically just said the Bible's not sufficient to meet every need in your life. That's what Andy Stanley just said. You got a problem in your life? Don't go to the Bible. Mm-hmm. You, you got something, uh, if you're a Christian and you're struggling with something, don't go to the Bible. That, yeah. that's, that's literally what and, Andy and, Stanley and, said. And you know what that leads to? That leads to God's people losing all hope. Mm, yeah. Because... Where are you going to find your hope? Where are yeah. you going to find your joy and your peace? Mm. Or even, Besides in the word of, of your God, yeah. your heavenly father, where else are you going to find yeah. that hope? <laughs> if you have, if the word of God is not true, then I have no hope. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. And, and, and 
I mean, the slam dunk argument for me is, I mean, Andy Stanley just said that you need to restart your faith by something other than the word of God. But Romans says, so faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Mm. That just completely contradicts what Andy Stanley said, <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, yeah. and and it's it's hard because, you know, I, I do I, I feel for him because, I mean, it's it's almost like. I mean, you wonder if maybe this is also his personal experience. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, why would someone who has believed the Bible, at least publicly believed the Bible for their whole life, all of a sudden come out now and mm. say, risk their neck, really, to say yeah. that uh, that it's not true, I mean, unless they believed it, mm. unless they actually believed that it wasn't true. Yeah. You know, that's scary. Yeah, I, I, like the way I think about it is, is just... Like, so you're telling me you'd rather hear the voice of the world than the voice of God. Like, you're, you're telling me that there's something else better than than hearing God's voice in his word. Mm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, you're telling me that, that, that someone's smarter, there's something wiser, there's something greater mm. than God's word. Yeah. God's written inspired word. Mm. You know, that that is just a sorry. <laughs> that's just a that's just a slap in the face of God to yeah. just spit on his word and say that's not enough. You know? And as I as I'm just thinking about it, you know, uh Paul wrote to Timothy, and Timothy was a pastor, a young pastor, and this is what he says to Timothy, second Timothy four, verse one, he says, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. What does Paul exhort Timothy to do? Preach the word. Amen. Preach the word of God. Yep. And before that, he says, I charge you in the presence of God. I'm charging you, Timothy. I'm charging you, Andy Stanley, uh, that's like if Paul's like telling you this, right? <laughs> right? He's saying, I charge you, Andy Stanley, in the presence of God in Christ Jesus. And what is Christ going to do? He's going to judge the living and the dead yep. and preach the word. Mm. If you don't preach the word, then 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 there's no hope for us. Yeah, and 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 you've also you're robbing um, you know, we talked about this in another um, in another video. But by 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 softening up on the truth. By softening up on the word of God, you are robbing the people of God mm. of the truth. Yeah. And I I just, I can't see any good argument for doing that. Mm. I just, and, and, and you know what? I think also as I was looking at this, uh, you know, I, I kind of feel like I can almost see what the heart, what the heart of the problem is, if I can be so bold. Mm. Um. I think that he has, you know, he, ne I don't think he ever held the worldview that I'm about to say, you know, mm. um, but there's this idea of, of presuppositionalism it's mm. called, right. Yeah. Where, where you basically say, I believe that the word of God is the truth. And I believe that ultimately I can present you with all this evidence all, you know, all these evidential apologetics and philosophical apologetics, which are all great, mm. but I can present you with all this stuff, but ultimately the thing that is going to convince you that the word of God is true is the word of God and the Holy Spirit moving through his word. Mm. Amen to that. Yeah. And, and that is, that is, that is the, the worldview that I hold mm. regarding scripture. So I believe that the main thing that is going to convince a person that the word of God is the truth is God, mm. you know, yeah. we're going, it's because God is going to put that faith in our hearts to believe the word of God. Mm. And, and, you know, you see people, um, you know, I'm, I'm reminded of like something like apologia church, right. Yeah, Where yeah. they go out and they do this street evangelism, yeah. right. And they go out and they talk to that. They're, they're, you know, it's, it, those videos are really excellent and mm. well done. You know, you look them up there. It's, it's well worth your time. And they'll talk to, They'll go stand outside abortion clinics and Mormon temples. It seems yeah. like those are the places that they frequent the most. But the way that they handle the word of God is such that they believe that it is supernatural mm, and that yeah. it and that it that it that God works through his word to convict a person mm. that it is true. Yeah. 
Yeah. And and that's really how all of us as believers should be. Mm, yeah. We should hold that the word of God is powerful and true. Amen. And yeah. and that the word of God will uh you know that that God will ultimately work through his word mm. to convince someone that they're you know that it, that it's true. And that's why we don't need any other any other programs or any <laughs> other steps or yeah. Or, or, or uh, you know, classes and all these, all these other types of things yeah. that distract from the Word of God. You know, we don't, we don't really yeah. need that stuff. That's yeah. not going to save a person. Yeah, yeah. I like, you know, just just thinking about it. When he says the Bible says, right, and he and he says, well, we don't need that. We don't need what the Bible says. <laughs> Man, if Paul was in your church, I'm pretty sure he'd walk up to your pulpit and just grab your TV and smash it on the floor. <laughs> 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 because because if 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 you read the book of Romans mm -hmm. chapter 1 verse 16 one of the most known bible verses it says the gospel is the power of god Amen. unto salvation Amen. Th there is no other way people can be saved like like when people come up to me <clears throat> oh you know my marriage is my marriage is a problem and i have this going on no you know what the problem is you are a sinner and you stand before god condemned mm -hmm. and you need to be reconciled to him through jesus christ mm. right that there is power in the gospel Amen. of jesus christ not in some program not in some strategy not in some philosopher who came up with a great idea 2000 years ago mm -hmm. no no there's there's power in the gospel and that's enough and i don't care if people say all the you know i go to church and it's so boring and all we do is sing hymns and then we just read the bible and then we listen to preach and it's just so boring and there's dust on the floor and you know and it smells like dust and, and the pews hurt my back <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and the preacher's old you know and there's just this and that uh, just i don't like it well guess what <laughs> the uh, what does it say the wisdom of god Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the the wisdom of God or or, or the the uh, foolishness of the, uh, the there's like the world looks at the cross as foolishness. What Christians do, the world looks at that as foolishness. Mm. So why go to something else? Why are you going to go to some secondary um, thing to to provide what people really need? Mm. People really need the gospel, yep. you know. And so, you know, I think about. You know, when we, as we're closing, you know, we think about Andy Stanley and this is not to, you know, we, I'm calling me, me and you are calling him out on, you know, some heretical teaching, yep. but at the same time, we also have to pray for Andy Stanley. You know, mm. we can't just, mm. we can't just call him out and be like, well, he's a false teacher who cares about him. No, you know? no, we, we care about him. Yeah. Like why would we, why would we put out, put out this video? If we didn't care about him, you know, mm -hmm. so, so we do care about Andy Stanley and the state of his soul and, you know, and if he's even saved, mm -hmm. you know, if he's even saved. So I just encourage you guys to just pray for him and pray for other uh, false teachers, you yep. know, the prosperity teachers, that they would come to the truth, that they would come to the true gospel and the true God and the true knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know? Yeah, it's it's true. And my heart breaks every time I see another one of these videos. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is, yeah. it is, it's hard. It's, it's tough to see. And, and I was just talking to someone about this earlier before, you know, before we came here, but it seems, it, it seems like every time, you know, you see like some, some preacher that really starts to, you know, get, you know, get the word out there. Mm. Right. All of a sudden there's always like a false teacher that comes. Oh next yeah. To him, oh yeah. You know? yeah. And, it's and, true. and, and, and so the, you know, the word of God, uh, commands us to be very careful mm. with who we're listening to yeah you know yeah um you know to to not be uh to not just accept what we hear yeah but to check it against the word yeah you know true. yeah so. well guys I, I hope you enjoyed this reaction video we haven't done this in a while yeah you know and yeah. we're gonna come out with some more soon and uh, I just pray, guys, you have a great, blessed day. Hope you guys were edified by this podcast. And I hope you have a great day. God bless.